Good morning and welcome to another episode of Mafia Memoirs. We are the dynamic duel of RotoFS and Zimware. My name's Jody. I'm Rod, and as always, Mafia Memoirs is sponsored by RotoFS, the software that drives your automotive business. It drives it to profits. Really, right. that's what it comes down to. And we are also have to give a mad shout out to Daryl Lyons. We were on the phone with him yesterday. We had the Southern <coughs> Detailers Conference coming up on June 13th through the 14th in Kentucky. So if you like bourbon, whiskey, that is the place to be. And we're going to be talking and playing with cars. So, so it's all boss today. I mean, it is about getting it done. So we have the two men, the myths, the legends of detail boss, Christian and Chris Parker. How's it going? And they are not only artists and craftsmen, but they are elite at throwing down the crap. Dishing <laughs> <laughs> so it out. Honestly, uh, wanted to wait till this was live, but you probably, as far as my twisted personality, you are the closest to what my wife calls the worst personality ever that I have <laughs> ever met. And that is just you're really close to twisted if i get like halfway through a joke you understand it before it comes out of my mouth <laughs> that is perfect that is and, and i just call that perfect it's, it's yeah perfect. <laughs> we, we so, get each other that's right we get it we get it so yeah. um you also have your buddy with you today what's your dog's name this is Django. Yep. he's a seven-year-old minpin chihuahua there you go he's the shop dog yeah, yeah, so it's like, you know, everybody says their dogs look like their owners, so you got a mint pin. <laughs> <laughs> He's short, right? <laughs> Holy crap. Right out of the gate. Just boom. Oh, you got to do it, man. Now, you, you know, you know, Rod and I have mad, mad respect, and he keeps touching the table making our laptop shake. So it's not that. an earthquake in Idaho. It's, it's just me, Rod. It's so. So why don't you guys, um, I, I, we, we eventually want to walk through the shop because you guys always have some cool stuff in there, but kind of talk about um, just how you got to where you're at, right? From several years ago when you decided you wanted to do this to where you're at today, how did that progress? Well, we've always been into cars. We've always liked cleaning cars since we're little kids with our dad helping him wash his cars when we were old enough to drive to care of our cars. I started off having just a basic porter cable polish in my car. Everyone in my town, friends, family, oh, your car looked great. Looking back all these years later at pictures of my old cars, they were swirled to hell. They looked like crap. I didn't know what I was doing, you know? But everyone, because nobody did that kind of stuff back in my hometown when I was a 16, 17-year-old kid, I had the shiny car. And um, so we never thought of making it a business until we were both in college in nursing school. We were going to be nurse anesthesiologists. And <clears throat> one night during a final finals we were studying for them and uh during our rn program and i said to him my brother we need to just quit this and start detailing because i was just fed up with just the, the grind of nursing every day and cleaning you know cleaning up old people and doing enemas i was not it wasn't my scene you know <laughs> so we at that point we just closed our book stopped studying we went and took the final i think i just filled in the circle c for every answer all the way down the book and just walked out of the class and never went back. And after that is when we got online and my brother actually was searching for training facilities because we want to set ourselves aside from other detailers who just pick up a Home Depot bucket and uh, a sponge and go wash cars. He found Rennie's uh, detailing success training and we went to there and the rest is history. We got out of Rennie's course and you know there was a lot of learning and there's still learning as you know every year. I mean, we're at different education things every year, multiple times a year, mm -hmm. but just because, just like college, you don't go to college and you're not in instant success. We went to Rennie's and we weren't in instant success. We struggled for a couple of years getting going. But now we're nine years in and we're still going and we're not at our uh, end point yet for sure. We have a long way to go. It's kind of funny because when, uh, when we went to training, I didn't even know how to hold a polisher. I mean, I put a polisher to paint. It was just wobbling all over the place. And it's, it's, it's crazy where life takes you because uh, I never would have thought that we would have the business we have and be working on the things that we are. It's pretty, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and you guys are, I mean, I, I, we've talked about this before. I know that there's a, there's a big difference between <clears throat> somebody who's cocky and there's a lot of detailers that are cocky, right? I mean, but then there's also confidence and the confidence is um, it, 
having the ability to know that you can fix something and also know when you can't. Yeah, right. And that, I think that's the big difference is somebody that's cocky would look at something that's completely foobard and go, yo, I can fix that. And you're like, no, you can't. The only guy they make it worse. Is a paint gun. You know, I mean, you got, if you got clear coat burned off, you're not doing <laughs> that with a polisher. No. Nope. So um, I think that that's a big distinction. I think you guys probably get a bad rap outside of the, the circle of friends you have as being cocky, but there's a big difference in that. And that, that I, I try to make that distinction when people talk to us about um, even the same thing with the detail mafia, you know, well, those guys seem to be really cocky. Well, no, there's a confidence there because they have the training and they have the knowledge and they have the experience behind them to do it. It's just like anybody in any industry, when you're confident, you can do something, you do it. So, you know, I mean, I, I think anybody would have the same story. If you look back on a car that you've touched 10, 15 years ago, you'd be like, Oh my God, you know? Oh, I know. We polished cars. And I remember this one infinity. I'll never forget it back in 2011. We we're you know working out of our home in a garage and we had the tripod lights and all that stuff and we're like we were gonna kill this this car looks awesome the first step we did we cut it and the polish just wouldn't wipe off first thing i did i'm like i didn't know what to do i was fresh out of training i called rennie hey i cannot wipe this polish off what do i do it doesn't wipe off anything he's like well just put more of the same polish on the same pad and go over it like dissolves like i'm like <laughs> and that, that fixed it but then when we're all done that car it looked great but then it drove down the road and the sun hit a certain way i'm like Oh man, like I need to, I need to, I need to get better at this, you know, yeah. but again, that's when we were doing details, you know, paint corrections for a hundred, 150 bucks. And now our paint corrections start at three fifty to $500 bare minimum. And our stage one paint correction now is better than our three stages were almost 10 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and I'm sure in a couple more years, our paint corrections will be better than they are now. It's just, you're always getting better. Let, let's talk about that evolution, right? Because I mean, Chris went to never touching a polish to now. I mean, you guys are the elite of the industry. Um, your work speaks for itself. And I think that gets back to Rod's point about confidence is when, when you're confident, your work speaks for yourself. When you're cocky, your mouth speaks for yourself. And, exactly. and so talk about that evolution of going from you know that infinity to where you guys are today how did you get to that point and are there is there a secret path i think the secret path isn't so secret it's just you have to do a lot of paint correction i mean if we're talking paint correction on that level of it just detailing in general but we did i mean literally now we've worked up to the point that we are doing paint corrections every single day at least one or two sometimes we're doing three paint corrections a day on three cars, you know, and uh, it's just the two of us. Yeah, it's just the two of us. No one else does paint corrections for us. We don't sub out any paint correction work. And the more practice makes perfect, and it's it's not BS, you know. Yeah. We used to take we used to take hours to do a car to, uh, for a paint correction, like literally an hours to do a stage one. Now me and him could do a stage one paint correction in 30, 40 minutes tops. Yep. Doesn't matter what kind of car. I think a lot of the experience though and different methods and techniques with how you maneuver the polisher and the speeds and what areas of the pads to use on certain corners and whatnot really came into effect when we had a client that we detailed a lot of cars that he had just recently painted for selling at Barrett Jackson. Um, the painter did a horrible job. They came out of the gun looking like they got, you know, basketball texture sprayed on them. And uh, we had to sand them down, some of them 800. Uh, most of them, though, we started at about 1,200 and then did 2,000, 3,000. And then we had to compound and polish and probably do four or five steps of paint correction on every single one. Um, there was one, it was a Eleanor um, GT500, totally gloss black painted. The guy wanted the whole car sanded down. He wanted the door jam sanded down. He wanted the trunk jams, engine, the engine bay. bay underneath the trunk underneath the hood every every single painted surface of that car had to be sanded had to be sanded in orange peel free glass so before again he got it out of paint the car had come in just a shell on a, on dollies and we he call us in all right engine bay trunk everything before everything gets assembled do that stuff so we're literally standing in the engine bay of this car with tiny little sandpaper things sanding by hand machine the strut towers the firewall every surface and then after you sand it what do you got to do you got to compound it all out and you can't just compound it to make it shiny. You got to get the sand marks out. Otherwise it looks like shit too. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you had to compound, get all the sand marks out <laughs> then do all your polishing. Now the engine bay is great. 
now it's time for me to flip out as I watch them drop an engine in my perfect engine bay. You know? right. <laughs> <laughs> but same, same thing. I mean, the, the hood's on the car. You can't really sand a hood while it's just flopping around on the floor. So it's attached to the car and the hinges, and you're looking up, and you're sanding under the hood, making all that texture. So when they pop the hood, it's a black mirror reflecting in the motor. So all those angles and little nooks and crannies, that's not even like the exterior of a car. It's such intricate work. That really helped us finesse our paint correction skills because if you could paint correct and sand down an engine bay, you could do flat panels and even curvature panels on a car. Yeah. So a lot of people don't have that experience. Not a lot of people have the opportunity to get that experience. So that really does, we feel, attest to our paint correction skills, our speed, and our quality that we learned at such an early stage back then on that type of stuff. Yeah. And the amount of critique, too. Um, I mean, those cars, they weren't just, you know, getting polished and going back in someone's garage. They were going to Barrett-Jackson where on TV, thousands of people are seeing them. So they had to be spot on because it's our reputation. I mean, keep in mind, this is only, what, two years that we were in business that we started doing these cars. Yeah, not, not even two full years. Yeah. And there's cars going across the auction block that we did. And if you ever watch Barrett-Jackson, if you look at their lighting, you can see 98% of the cars, the paint swirl looks like crap. There's texture. I've seen sand marks on repaints on the on TV. I didn't want my cars going across the block looking like that. Even if no one knew I did it, I knew it. And I knew there were people out there who did know I did it. I had a tab. I made it look perfect. And we just set an image for ourselves and an expectation that we wanted to be this level, this image, this notoriety in the industry. And that's what we're always shooting for. And We've got a lot of that already, but I still think there's a lot more that we're going to you know, do. Yeah. Constant improvement. So while, while you're talking about that, that experience with the Eleanor car, I think a lot of people have a misconception that are not uh, doing it on a day-to-day -day basis that uh, to do a full paint correction, you have to sand. So in you guys' opinion, how, what percentage of cars that you do a full correction do you actually ever pick up a piece of sandpaper? The ones that pay me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's what you do. I mean, honestly, almost every car could use sanding because a lot of right. cars that go, that go through car washes, they'll have deep scratches or bird etchings that are in there that don't come out with a typical paint correction. Or on the other side, people don't want to pay to have it removed. But then you look at a lot of manufacturer cars, most of them, except maybe Rolls Royce, some mm -hmm. Bentleys, they all have orange peel. So if you say, does my car need to be sanded? Yes. That's your, that's your preference. I mean, in my opinion, if you want it to look like a glass window, yeah, because you can't get rid of it. Oh, that doesn't come out with clay bar. No, uh, orange peel in the clear coat doesn't come out with clay bar, you know? <laughs> so you need to sand it down. Even buffing orange peel is not going to get rid of it. So honestly, nowadays we don't do too many more full sand jobs because people just, they don't want to spend the money for that type of thing. Right. And, um, especially on auction cars. Like we did it for that guy because they were so bad and that's what he wanted. But a car that's going to an auction that is pretty nice, somebody doesn't want to drop five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a car they're selling. Yeah. Yep. Percentage wise though, in our business since we started in 2011 to today, honestly, sanding full cars is probably two to five percent max of our business. That's it. Full cars. I mean, we'll get out and do a panel or you know, like spot, spot <laughs> scratches, stuff like that. We do that probably a couple times a month, maybe every other month, stuff, spot panels or whole panels, mm -hmm. but never whole cars, not too much anymore. People honestly just don't want to pay for that service because they think, well, I just got the car painted or I just bought this brand new car. Why am I going to spend this much more money on it? I just got a paint job or I just got a new car. So it's, it's not a thing of, it's total preference. They don't want to pay and I'm not going to do the work. It's very tedious work. It's risky work. You know, I mean, a lot of people who do that end up burning through with the sandpaper. And if you don't burn through with the sandpaper, people end up burning through compounding out the sandpaper marks. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 think, I don't think people understand. We were actually, uh, Jody and I, when we were in Vegas, we're talking to a really young kid there. And he was like literally right out of high school and he had started detailing. Um, very humble, you know, asking a lot of questions. Where do I go to do this? And so we were <laughs> turning him on, you know, to IDA, Mafia. Um, trying to introduce him to some people that, that were there that were saying, you know, you need to go talk to Rennie. We said, Chris Woman's right over there. Get a hold of him. Sorry, bumping the table again. Um, you know, go to the one day trainings. If you can't afford to go to the five day, go to a one day. And, and literally, my advice to him is he's like, well, he goes, well, I own a polisher, but I've never picked it up. I'm scared. And I was like, dude, go to a junkyard, get a hood, get something you're not worried about burning through. 
and literally burn through the paint. Figure out what it takes to burn through. That's so, so now true. you know how to come back off of it. And you know, it's it's like you said, if people aren't doing it every single day, they don't get it. I mean, sanding, like you said, it's extremely um, risky because it is invasive. It's majorly invasive. <laughs> but if you get into the wrong thing, like single stage paint, you're oh. in the paint, right? You're day in. one, you're in the paint. And if it's a repaint, there, somewhere on that car, you know, people always ask me on like my truck <clears throat> that I'm working on right now. Um, they're like, oh, well, how do you know where to go? I'm like, look, there's, there's filler underneath that. I don't care what show you're watching. You watch the most professional guy on the planet. There's filler under there. You have to be careful. You can only heat that to a certain level and you start reducing the bond to the metal. You got to test the paint. And so this kid we were talking to, I said, go get, a, go get a panel and just start going through. Feel how hot it is. Work through it. Feel how hot it is. See what it takes to burn through. I did it with a, as a demo. Um, I saw one of these denim discs advertised as, you know, the world savior of getting rid of orange peel. I'm like, yeah. Whatever. So I literally took a disc and I said, I had this panel on, a, on my truck, that single stage paint. I was like, I want to see how fast it takes to burn through this. I did four passes with a 3401 and I was through to primer. <laughs> like, you're not screwing around, man. You, you're like, Whoop, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. That yeah. thing is insane. And I'm like, I wouldn't use that for, for paint correction. I mean, it's, it's like, I wouldn't touch it. I'd rather use sandpaper than those denim pads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean I've, we've, we've used those denim pads. They don't even get rid of that much orange peel being so minimal. Like you have to really, really look at how much it got rid of compared to before and after, but they generate so much heat that it's more zips risky. It, it zips it right yeah. off. The paint, it was zip the paint off. I guess you got rid of your orange peel at that point, but. <laughs> oh yeah. It, the orange peel has gone. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think the challenge there is that, um, <clears throat> with certain vehicles. So if you get a vehicle that's in there, let's say it's a, it's a, a, a single stage original classic that came from the seventies, there's orange peel on it, period. If you want to have the fender polished, it's not going to look like the door that's next to it because the door has orange peel. So yep. you've got to, I think that it's important to correct and to make the car what the owner wants it to be. If I want it to be a concourse restoration, I'm going to go to quail and I've got, you know, something like that. They're paying for that. And, and I'm calling you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you bring your blank check and I'll take care that's of it. That's right. That's exactly. right. But if you just want to have it, it match, you have to match. And, and I think that that's an important thing for people to explain to a customer, especially on these old, some of these older cars and even the newer ones that have just, you know, and, I, and I'm real brutal about it. I look at it, I'm like, somebody drank the paint, pissed it on that car because it looks horrible. <laughs> you know. <laughs> The, you have got to just make it to the level that it needs to be. There's chips in it. I mean, people drive these cars. There's rock chips and stuff. It, it doesn't matter the amount of money that you spend it, to fix something that's been sitting around. Like, I've got this 2000 Saab that's a one-off car. There's one of 47 that were ever imported. The thing sat under a part, tarp for five years, flapping in the breeze. There are deep scratches in it that are not coming out. Um, so you polish it to that level. I'm not going to go to the level of wet sanding the whole car because no. those aren't coming out. They're white. No. They're, they're cleared yeah. up in the primer. So just make it look good and go with it. You always have to make sure you find out your client's expectations. What are they expecting? And make sure you always under promise and over deliver. It's just how you have to be. You can't promise, oh, I'm going to get that out. I'm going to get that out. And then it doesn't come out. Then they're mad. Or you'll get it out, but now you're going to spend so much more time doing a promise that you're not getting paid for and now you're losing time and you can't be doing that. You have to just set the expectation and understand it. When I yeah. love that you said you're losing time, not money, right? Because I think a lot of times people go, well, it's just my time. Well, your time is money or time it's, is money. It, exactly. And, or it's time with your family or time with your brother, working right. out, lifting the weights, getting bigger, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about because one of the things that you guys have done really good as part of your brand is actually building a brand i mean your camera shots your photos mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. about your brand is top notch it's not anything so let's talk about the importance of building a brand Building a brand brings recognition, whether it's, I mean, if you're looking for sponsorships or recognition in the industry you're in, that'll help with that because no one's going to look at you if you're not recognizable. If you can't be seen, how, how, how are you ever going to be, you know, seen? Uh, as far as clients go, 
if you have a brand uh, recognizable thing like Starbucks, you can see the Starbucks logo and you don't, it doesn't have to say Starbucks. It doesn't have to, you know, you see the golden arches. You don't have, it doesn't have to say McDonald's. You just know what it is. You're going to pull over. I want that cheeseburger. I want that latte. You know what you're getting every time because they set the standard and you go in and get the same thing. Whether in your town or my town, I could get the same exact tasting Starbucks as long as the employee doesn't mess it up. <laughs> one of the places. But with us, since we're just one shop and our brand is the brand, everyone that's been to us and refers to us knows they're going to get the same unmatched quality no matter what when they come here. I think our image too um, is set aside from other people or other companies because um, it's all done in-house. We do our own website. We do our own videos, we do our own social media, we take our own pictures, and it captures exactly what we want to capture. Um, now, I know not everybody has the talent or the eye for that thing, so me and my brother are extremely blessed that we can have the ability to do all these things, but um, still, nonetheless, I think that really has played a part in how our mm -hmm. image has kind of evolved in a different way than some of these people that you see that have maybe higher-end production videos than ours, but they're still, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same. Because, okay, if a detailer is doing his work, cool, he's doing good work. But now he has this different guy who has a different idea of what a website should look like. Even though the detailer is telling him what he wants, it's still built by this guy. And then this other guy is doing his Instagram. Another guy is doing his Facebook and picking and choosing the pictures. Some, another photographer is taking pictures in the shop. So if all these ideas and thoughts of what this business should be being posted up and marketed, but that's not like that with my brother and I. We have the same image. And we can convey that across all platforms. And that's why our image is different than everyone else's because yeah. it's just us. I know and there's guys in our market. Go ahead. No, as I say, you guys get, um, <clears throat> although sometimes I think it can be something that bothers people, you guys get imitated a lot, right? I mean, people try to imitate what you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, so. <laughs> that's a that is a form of flattery i mean i I'm, I'm the same way it pisses me off when somebody tries to steal stuff but at least you know at that point you're doing something right because people are trying to emulate that right and exactly a quote i i believe rennie said this back in monterey back a couple years ago i know i took the quote and i put a picture for the mafia up a while ago i have to find it maybe repost it soon um when you get to where we are you'll be where we were and that's what yep. we try to uphold all the time. You could copy me today. You could copy my, my Lightroom. You could copy my image. You could try copying our video style or whatever. But you know what? It took you, what, five, six, seven, nine years to copy us finally. And now you're finally putting out that image. It's not the same image, but it's that image. Now I'm going to flip it up. Every year we change stuff. Next year we have different plans. I mean, it's always going to be different. So yeah, you'll, you'll eventually copy and catch up and whatnot, but it'll be the past. You'll be two, three, four years behind me. So yes, it pisses you off in the moment, but in reality, it doesn't change my business, you know? Right. Right. That's, we actually had a situation come up like that where there's a, a, a competitor coming in and uh, the comment that was made to them by somebody else was, you really want to be number four. There's three other people in this industry. You want to be number four because you're playing catch up from day one and they're 10 years ahead of you guys, you know? Yep. So, I, I love that the thing that I like about what you said is, is where, where you're going to be is where I was. And you're not worried about anybody else, but your brand and fine tuning your machine. And I think a lot of times, especially younger detailers, business owners, they get so consumed about what everybody else is doing that they're not worrying about their own garden, right? They're not, owning their skills, they're not building their business, they're not branding their business. And I think that is a really, really strong lesson for people. Oh, it's so true. If you're worried about looking at that guy's tomato plants, how big they are and how big the tomatoes are growing and how red they are, and then here's your tomato plants dying over here. I mean, what good's that doing you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a lot of people are too busy cutting down the other guy's stuff than trying to build their own Why stuff. Why are you up. pointing at me when no, you no, say no, cut down? Tomato. Tomato. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like I'm tearing him down all day. It's like, yeah, it's, whatever. It's, it's, to me, it's the, it's the social media crap where, you know, I, I'm going to take the time to go out and rip apart a car that you, that you posted. Oh, my God, that looks like crap. There's orange peel all over it. 
Well, so two things there. One, why am I taking my time ripping your stuff apart instead of trying to improve my skills? And number two, I have no idea what the background on that car is. It could be an original painted Boss 302 Mustang that's never been touched. And yes, it's got orange peel and it should. It's all original, you know? But, so, but you know what? That's, that guy with that 302 didn't pay me to get rid of the orange peel. So that's why there's our orange peel. Right, right, <laughs> right. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. It's like that's, you have that's no what idea the context people. behind this. And, and so I think that people need to, I mean, I know everybody con is constantly saying that, but it's like you got to get off of the negative posting and people have got to stop ripping apart other people's work. Because, you know, my wife hates it. We go to a car show or something, and I'm constantly nitpicking every little thing on every car. And she's like, God, why do you do that? And I'm like, well, I mean, point blank, it makes me feel better about my stuff. And first thing we did, <laughs> so first thing we did, we went to SEMA. <laughs> yeah, at least I admit it. We went to SEMA, and we went and found, I found the crappiest looking truck I could find on site. And I'm like, there, I'm taking, and Jody's like, why are you taking a picture of that? And I'm like, because I'm posting that next to my stuff, because it makes me look better as a painter and a detailer. He did exactly. I mean, that thing. And I'm not ripping this guy. I'm not saying a word to him about his work. Not one bit because huh. it's, not worth, it's not worth his time or my time for me, him, me to tell him that the panel's off by a quarter of an inch. I just want to take a picture of it because it gives me inspiration to do better. I mean, oh. that's what people should be doing is trying to make themselves better. Well, and then, exactly. there, was the, then there was the one truck that he looked at. He's like, I'm not I'm even looking at that one. That one. That thing's he just walked perfect. away. I mean, it's <laughs> like, I, I'm just going to drop my stuff right now because I'm never going to get to that one. You know, <laughs> the other day, about two weeks ago, I guess it was almost a uh, McLaren came in, had clear bra done from somewhere else. The guy just bought it and it was a bad job. It wasn't tucked and wrapped. It wasn't even trimmed back enough. And it was already starting to collect in all the edges, all that dirt, you know, where the clear bra looks yeah. black and yeah. brown and whatnot. So, you know, when you're dressing tires and your, your fingers digging into the applicator and your thumb gets that brown gunk under the, under your nail and it looks dirty until you scrub your nails and wash it. That's exactly how the clear bra looks. So I didn't post it, but I took pictures with my fingernail next to that guy's clear bra and I said, nailed it. And I was going to post it, but I, <laughs> I didn't do it. But I, I still want to be slamming anybody. But the problem is, if I go post that specific McLaren, my client, he follows us and he knows the clear bra. <coughs> he wanted it trimmed and I just didn't trim it. I said, it's beyond that. If I trim it back, it's going to be too far back and you're going to have exposed surface. Right. So. Even though he knows it's bad, it's not a professional tactic to, even though it's funny, he's going to see his McLaren with my dirty fingernail making fun, making fun of it. And that's not, he's a paying customer. No, no, uh, that, I that, think that's that, good. That's a perfect way to do that. It's like, hey, we all know that there's something wrong. When you need it replaced, come talk to us and we'll do it the right way. That's I, all you say. I think yeah. that is an important note as well, because I think a lot of times I see <laughs> detailers getting online and they do a rant. And it's maybe not even related to their business. They're ranting about something else. hundred percent. It, it, yep. it does reflect on your business. And yep. so, you know, making sure that everything that you put out online is consistent with what you want your brand to be. Because everything you post out there is a reflection, whether or not you like it or not, is a reflection on you and your business. Now, people get out there, whether it's on their personal pages or their detailing pages, they'll go live, they'll post a pre-recorded video, they'll just make a status update, complaining about their neighbors, about their life, their stress. I mean, it's like politics, po cursing, yeah, po politics cursing, flipping out, swearing left and right. I don't have the greatest mouth on me either. You guys know that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking clean now. I know you. But uh, <laughs> the, the point is, I'm not going out there and having a rant fest because I had a bad day and someone ticked me off while I was at my shop or my family ticked me off or someone screwed me over with this. You know, I'm not going to go live and complain about that because no matter what, people know. I mean, we're not, we're not celebrities, but in our industry, a lot of people know who we are and they could be like, oh, hey, there's Christian and there's Chris. Look at them cursing, flipping out. You know, they're so unprofessional. I didn't think they're like that. And that totally dumbs down your image, lessens it waters it down it makes it look worse people don't look up to you that they way. don't look up right. to you and they just look down you more and if you didn't already have a good image if your image was already kind of eh, now you're really in the in the shitter so yeah, yeah exactly and i just don't think it's worth it i mean you, you know i have a bad day and i'll come in here and rant to jody i'll shut my door and I, that's just yeah. because i don't want anybody else in the world not even related to our industry to hear it Exactly. Yes, it helps to rant about that but not publicly where it's never going away we you and know at, we, Exactly. At the end of the day, someone ranting about something like that makes them look bad. It doesn't go away. But 
really, what did it do? That live video, you venting to Facebook, what did that do? Did that fix your life? Did that fix your problem? Did it fix the people you're bitching about? No, you just look, no. you made, you look like a fool and now it's, there forever. now it's stuck on there. And if you go and delete it, it doesn't matter how many people already saw it. You can't delete someone's memory. Nope. You know? No. Nope. Well, I know you guys are tight against time today. So do you want to give us a quick shop. tour of yeah. the shop and then yeah, we'll sure. wrap things up for you guys? Yeah, definitely. Let me uh, flip this camera around here. We got the 50s music playing today, but there you go. Ooh. this GT, or I think it's a GT, <laughs> came in. He um, lived in an apartment complex. They're from Belgium, and their upstairs neighbor had a flood in their kitchen or bathroom, something, and drywall fell all over the car, scratched it, ran down the car. Like, the ceiling caved in in this guy's garage. Wow. So the car, it, you can't see it in this lighting because it's just in our wash bay, but drywall fell down scuff the pain up so he's in for a pain correction this car is the 97 turbo s we just finished doing a two-stage paint correction with the single yeah. stage paint. yeah now is that the one you posted some pictures of i uh, in my story on detail boss's story the other day yeah. i posted yeah. the before okay. and after of the wing it was the wing yeah, right yeah, here yeah, yeah so that's pretty much all done We're, all we have to redo is the clear bra he wants the factory pieces removed and replaced not with the actual dealership ones that you would buy but we're going to custom make them to look exactly like these so they're not so dirty and black yep then uh this is the imported r34 nice we're gonna do a stage two paint correction and a two-year coating on this because he plans on just having us do a freshen up polish every year so there's no point in doing a five-year coating or anything like that right hand drive Look at us all leaning in to look. Coach <laughs> <laughs> Rod and I are leaning in to look like we're it's looking like, at the interior. I, know, like, I, think, I think Jody actually put his hand over his belt. Like, I know, so it's a habit. I'm like, <laughs> he put his over hand on his belt so he wouldn't scratch the paint. That oh is hilarious. God. And then this is being picked up today. This guy drove about an hour and a half from Prescott, Arizona to drop his 88. Porsche 928 off. He got a stage two and seven year package. Yes, yeah, stage two paint correction and a seven year package. So the car is somewhere. He knows the paint job isn't the greatest, but he restored it from God knows what it used to look like. And um, it's in pretty nice shape for being as old as it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, hey, man, that's an old car. And that's what's, that's like you're talking about. It's like the expectation of the customer. He's not having it repainted. He's not having, you know, it's, it's make it look as nice as you can for what it is. Exactly. So, I mean, you get down in here. I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but I mean, the, yeah. there's a yeah. lot of scratches still left that would have to be sanded. There's really deep water etchings. I mean, there's just stuff that's pretty much in some places unrepairable. But again, he's happy. This is what he wanted. And to him, it's good enough. I know, I know it's not good enough. You would know that, but this is what he wanted. Yeah. So, you meet, awesome. the, you meet or exceed their expectation in your set. Yep. That's it. That's exactly it. So, I love that. So, so you guys are saying you do, you do an average of three a day uh, yep. and you guys do other services just so for people that are watching this that want to get a hold of you, we know where you're at, but reiterate where you're at, how they get a hold of you, and then the type of services that you guys provide. So we're in Scottsdale, Arizona. You can reach us at scottsdalecardetailing.com on our website, our phone numbers, email, everything's on there, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube videos. You can check them out if you want to see some of our work. As far as services, paint correction, window tint, clear bra, vinyl wraps, wheel coatings, paint coatings, warranties, warranties, transparent yeah, warranties. Warranties, yeah. um, <clears throat> I think that's it. We do, yeah. you know, we do washes and stuff like that for existing clients. We feel that if you're, you didn't have a paint correction or a coating, there's no sense in paying a premium wash price that our shop has because you might as well go to the drive to car wash because that's what your car has been through or what you've been doing anyway. Yeah. If you invest, if, even if you invest $350 on a paint correction, let alone a coating, then it makes sense to spend the extra 50 bucks for a hand wash and blow dry and all that stuff. But we just start, tell people, we don't want to take your money unless it's well spent. It doesn't make sense. We talk people out of things all the time. People want lifetime coatings for thousands of dollars. And I say, you don't need that. You need the $900 one. Yeah. Like, really? You, you just quoted me 1900, but you'll take the nine. I'm like, yeah, it's what you need. You don't need a lifetime coating. You're not going to keep the car for more than two years. You just told me. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 makes sense. So, you know, just That's being honest in the front. You're not trying to yeah. dig, you know, excavate down to the bottom of their wallet all the time. You know, people don't like that. <laughs> exactly. But I, but I think that that's, that's, again, it's giving them expectations and, and, and resetting their expectations of what the industry is. There's a lot of people out there that just take the 1900 bucks and provide them something they don't need. Whereas you're like, this is really what you're asking me for. If you're selling the car, why are you even putting more than that into it? Let's get it to look as good as it can and go from there. Yeah. So. Well, awesome, guys. Man, we, we just really appreciate that you guys took a little bit of time out of your day. Um, I mean, mad, mad respect for you guys, not only because of the bar that you've set in the industry, but because of the true professionals that you guys are. I mean, you guys on all levels are the boss. So uh, thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. We appreciate, appreciate the invite on the show because your show is badass too. So, <laughs> well, well, thank well, you. Thank you. Thank we're you. we're so. trying, man. We're just having a good time trying to elevate the industry, trying to you know bring to not only other detailers but consumers. You go, guys. There are some major talent people. Detailers are not just car washers. There are guys like you that are true artists. You know, you're more of a craft. You're far more of an artist than you are a craftsman. And there are a lot of guys with a bucket and a Home Depot and a van that are going out and washing, but it is not the same as what you guys bring to the table. So, No, but I mean, even those people with the wash bucket, they can get to any level they want. It's just they have to put the work in and have the, have the vision. Correct. You know? Yeah, yeah correct. exactly. Absolutely. And that's what I think the big difference is. There's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of people out there that, that think that on day one, they're going to jump to you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to be that guy, right? I've heard people say that about any, even, even Rennie, right? There's, I've heard somebody say that they're going to be, I'm going to be the next Rennie. And you're like, good luck. In 40 years, you know. I mean, good for you. Set, set, shoot for the stars doesn't mean you're going to get there. But you know, Rennie, Rennie even said, I mean, people try to be this instant detailing celebrity in the whole world. Why don't you focus yeah. on your local market first? And once you nail that, then go outside of that. Right. Yeah, I love are, it. Yep. So, get it country, guys. What's that doing for you? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. And 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 I think that that's that's people need to kind of look at their own area. We always talk about weather. You guys are in Arizona, so obviously you deal with a lot of different um, aspects of weather than somebody like Scott Masha who's dealing with a lot of salt and snow. <laughs> you know, and the same thing where we're at here, we're we're four seasons. We're more like um Scott's or uh uh what what is the the place up north? Yeah, the north but yeah. oh my god yeah, it didn't anyway, matter <laughs> anyway we're dealing with all four seasons and so we have to deal with different times of year you're different with different types of packages sometimes it's interiors only sometimes it's a lot of you know exteriors getting the road salt off in the springs and stuff so i think people have to look at their area what their business is and what they're trying to focus on and not try to be all things to all people yeah which yep. Well, thank you guys, man. We really do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy, busy day. Looks like you got a full stack of cars, a load yeah, of work yeah, we, today. So. We got stuff to do. Just make sure you post it this time. Oh, I yeah. will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you All so right, much. Thanks a lot, guys. The we'll rest of you guys that are tuning in, thank you so much for joining us every week here on Mafia Memoirs. Check us next week, same time, same bat channel. Actually, we have Big D. We're going to be talking about the Southern Detailers Conference next week. So we will check you next time. See you. See you guys.